Hello, this is Ryan with Deepwood Handcraft. Coming to you today from what is officially breakup here in Alaska. We had kind of a really weird winter this year. That was kind of not a winter. And then uh, warmed up really early and all the snow is just about gone now. And we have had a very eventful winter, I guess you could say, one way or the other. Um, this is the first video I've put out in quite a long time. And uh, the purpose for this video today is to do a full review of this Lester River Bushcraft Boreal shirt. And also, I'm going to sell this, and I will explain all that in the video. I don't really want to sell it because I really like it a lot but circumstances being what they are um, so just to give you a quick update on what we have been up to uh, the last video I made was the big backpack video and right at that time the house that we were renting had sold and so we had to move out our lease was up and I didn't sign the next lease because the lady that owned the house had it up for sale and so I told her we could just do month to month until the selling season was over and then we would sign a new lease and just my luck the very last few days before she was ready to take it all down some folks came up from Oregon living in a fifth wheel and had to get into a place so they bought that. So we had to move out and there was no nowhere else up here to rent because everybody is selling and nobody is renting um, for whatever reason and so we ended up in the church basement for about five or six months um, I would never say we were homeless because it was comfortable down there we had all of our we had a little studio apartment set up down there and had all modern conveniences and electricity and heat and full bathroom and a full kitchen and all that stuff that we needed um, but it wasn't necessarily a, a cakewalk or a picnic either um, but anyway all that aside we have purchased land about two miles off the road system um, no electricity, no water, no modern. And so we are completely off grid now, two miles off the road system. Um, we get our water from a well and our electricity comes from solar panels, battery bank, and a generator. Um, the cabin that we bought is fully plumbed and so we pretty much have all our modern conveniences here as well except that we're about two miles off the road so that means we have to right now we have to walk in and out um, because the trails are just destroyed from the melting snow and in the summer we will be taking four-wheelers or six-wheelers we don't have one yet so we're gonna have to purchase that so we'll be walking until then and then in the winter it's all snow machines so which we do have anyway I'll make a another video on this whole deal here and show you our setup I've got some footage from us moving in and stuff Elijah go on somewhere go and uh, so I'll put together a good video, show you the inside and the wood cook stove and the property and the cabin. It's all pretty sweet, actually. It's, it's actually a dream come true, quite literally. It ain't much, but it's ours, so we're going to build a life on it if God wills it. So anyway, today, Lester River Bushcraft Boreal shirt. I'm about six foot three, and you're going to have to forgive my camera work here. Our tripod did not survive the move, so... We're up on a tree stump right now, and I'll probably do some of this with my hands if I have to. I'm about six foot three. This is a size large. 
I wear about a size 34 pant. This is not too big on me. It's big enough that I can wear layers under it. I would say it's just about the right size. It's got enough uh, sleeve to keep my hands covered. And it's also got a little, so that when my hands are down by my side, it kind of, which is nice, it overlaps them just a little bit. You can adjust that with your snaps on your wrist cuffs if you want it to stay up on your hands. I got really long gorilla arms, so it's kind of nice if I need my hands to snap the cuffs and. This one's made out of what they call the barbarian wool. This is some kind of like uh, northern European surplus wool blankets that these are made out of. They're a little bit heavier than this, what they normally make their stuff out of. Um, they're a little bit more coarse and a tad bit more scratchy, but I like wool a lot, so that doesn't wool doesn't bother me at all. Um, it is heavier, it's warmer, a little bit thicker, a little bit more windproof. You can see the coarseness of the fibers in it. And so they didn't make very many of these because they didn't have so many blankets to make them out of. But I like it a lot. I'll explain why I'm going to sell it here in just a minute. So it's got the uh, drawstring thing, nice big deep hood which is kind of nice that you can draw it all the way down if you need to and then you can close up your if you're really needing to uh, batten down the hatches for whatever reason I'll gus it for your neck kind of keep the wind out and I might not sell this thing We'll see. I might throw it up. It's got the uh, patches for your arms to kind of protect the blankets material a little better when you're moving around and laying on the ground or lounging or working or moving through the woods. And I really might not sell this. Let's see what mama says. All right. So inside this nice, large, luxurious pocket, if I can see what I'm doing here, there are a couple of different uh, compartments. There's a zipper pocket that runs all the way, pretty much the length of your belly. Right now, I have salt and pepper in there, mostly salt because I like salt. And if you had to kill something and eat it, salt makes meat taste better, that's a fact. So that zipper pocket runs the length of your belly, and then up against the outside, there are three more, I don't know how much of that you're even gonna be able to see, three more pockets sewn in. You can see the stitch lines right here. So it gives you three pockets on the outside flap, and these are just kind of loose for you to hold stuff that you might need to access. And then there are these each side has these D-rings that you can hook your gear to if you need to hook up like your fire steel or even your keys or whatever you might want to put in that. So these are made, these are fabricated by Jason at Lester River Bushcraft. They are sewn up by Empire Wool and Canvas, I think is the name of that company, which they've got quite a few products that I wouldn't mind picking up, and they do stellar work. This thing is quality incarnate. I mean, I have no worries that this thing, other than if I just act stupid with it, is ever going to come apart on me and I tell you this thing is such quality that if 
I did happen to punch holes in it or do something or I would patch this thing and keep it forever. It's just made to last, man. Made in America. You can't really beat this kind of quality. These are a bit pricey. This one's, or I guess the, the standard ones I, are 250 I traded a bunch of leather work for this kind of over a long period of time so I didn't have to pay for it, which is good because I don't have that kind of money. But, uh, it's worth every penny, man. It was worth all the time I put into the leather to trade for it, for certain. This thing is... I would be surprised to find a Boreal shirt or a blanket shirt or any kind of product made out of this kind of wool fabric that was done better than these. I don't think they exist. I really don't. Maybe as good as. But I think this is probably as good as it gets. I don't there's I have no complaints about this as far as the construction goes. Now, some of the things that I would change and that I'm planning to change if I do keep this, um, and if nobody buys it, I'll keep it and I'm not gonna be heartbroken about it. One thing I would change is let's try to do some camera work. Right here at my waist, my belt underneath this my belt that holds my pants up is right here and what I would do is I would probably cut a slit here and don't ask Jason to do all this stuff if you wanted it done on your shirt you probably have to either take it to somebody or do it yourself because I'm sure he's not probably not gonna want to fool with it he makes what he makes and it's a absolutely fantastic product but for modification not some people like to modify their gear I'm one of those people I would cut a slit right here and uh, you know, line it with leather or something so that my belt could ride on the outside of my shirt. If you can see, I'll give you the idea. So it could run on the outside all the way up to here and then it would go into those slits and ride underneath and buckle where it normally does. And not for holding my pants up, but for holding my gear on the outside of my shirt. It would also kind of bring all this in together a little tighter. And I've done that before where I buckled my belt on the inside of my pocket so I still have access to my pocket but that kind of gets in the way of these zippered pockets that are in here and stuff like that so if I could put a slit on each side that's what I would do and then I might be tempted to change all this out with leather lace and uh, antler toggles and stuff but I'm kind of a uh, sometimes I Debate whether if it's good enough, I'll leave it alone, and that's what I've done with this. Okay, so the now why I would even consider selling this. Number one, this is the kind of item that I will wear if I am going out and going to be out and stay out for extended periods of time. Like if I'm out hiking or camping and I know I'm going to be out all day, this would be an article that I would easily put on and uh, maybe have to take it off in the real heat of the moment depending on what kind of day it was or what season it was because in my in Alaska this is a three season piece of gear right here throw something over for the windproof and the waterproof over top of it um, and this is easily a dead of winter item it's got great insulation sheds water beautifully I've worn this in the rain a couple of times um, but just that extra layer of protection over top like uh, Empire Canvas sells that white boreal shell that goes over top of this but they haven't been making them in the past couple of years because they can't get the material so I've read so that's kind of a bummer I would consider making myself one of those and it'd be snow white to match the snow that we might not ever get again up here I don't know um, for the dead of winter and then in spring and fall just kind of by itself during the day it's a it's kind of the perfect blend between it allows a little bit of air to get through so you don't just suffocate in the thing but uh, it's also very warm and insulating so your body heat's not just like blowing out through the fabric or anything so it's kind of really and especially days like today it'll probably warm up later on today but it's probably maybe 45 out here right now and this would be perfect to wear around in 45 degree weather unless you were really going to be getting on some physical activity like chopping down trees or building heavy shelters or something 
and then you might want to have something a little lighter underneath it so that you could take it off and still be comfortable. Um, so three seasons, it might be a little much in the summer. Then again, it can get cold and rainy and overcast real quick up here even in the summer. But it also gets hot, like up in a 100 degrees is not terribly uncommon for a week or two each summer. Um, so that being in mind, I would wear this if I was going to be out, didn't have to take it on and off and that kind of thing. And the truth is that right now I am not doing such things. Um, I'm not taking any kind of extended trips. I'm not going camping for any extended periods. That's going to be happening coming up pretty soon because when fall hits, I'll be moose hunting and you kind of have to dedicate some time to do such a thing as that, which is just going to break my heart. I'm, not, I'm going to hate having to go camp for a week or two to try to fill my freezer with meat. It's just going to be so hard and terrible. But anyway, currently I'm not. I'm stuck to the cabin and I'm stuck to the family situation, which is a toddler who is fully mobile and boys are different than girls. My girls would not hesitate to climb all over stuff and they were fearless and would do all sorts of things and the boy is is like that on steroids I don't know he's just kind of crazy and does what he wants um, and so leaving your wife at home with three small children my kids are five three and almost two um, I don't have a lot of time with the leather business and the cabin thing and um, to go out taking trips and camping and doing that kind of thing I, I haven't had time to do that in quite some time, and most of that has been because of the leather business. Is what it is. We are finally getting on top of it for real now. And uh, I can't say exactly what direction we're going to go once we are free and clear of our backlog, but it will be like starting life over again with all the stuff we need to have a good life. So it'll definitely be a change. But anyway, I don't have time to go out and take trips. I'm stuck to the cabin. Working around the cabin, for the most part, currently has been wood. Splitting and stacking wood. We had uh, the people that sold us this place. I'll go into all that later. But they kind of split a bunch of wood, put it under a tarp, and then they had to bolt down to the lower 48 for most of the winter. And so that wood wasn't really dry or cured or stacked properly or anything and it just kind of con condensated inside the tarp and then froze solid. It's all a chunk of ice. So when we moved in um, I had to do a whole bunch of cutting and splitting wood because we have a wood stove and luckily we had a bunch of down spruce trees that had been down for a year or two and they were already kind of good and dry and uh, so we made that work. But the point that I'm getting at is that working around the cabin, I'm in and out of my coat a lot. And I need it to be zippered and uh, be able to take it on and off real quick via the activity and what I'm doing. And I'm coming in the cabin and coming out of the cabin. And anybody who has really even spent any time at all in a log cabin with a wood cook stove, even in the coldest part of winter, it gets really hot in there because of the... You're cooking on that thing. You got to fire that thing up to cook. We cook three meals a day, um, breakfast, lunch, and dinner usually, and you got to fire the stove up hot three times a day. And right now we're going to end up putting a uh, a summer kitchen outside. We'll end up doing a lot of grilling and cooking over fires this summer because it's just not going to be doable in there with that wood cook stove because it gets it. Um, but anyway, you come in from cutting wood and I'd have to do something or take a phone call or answer an email or do something and uh, I got to be quick in and out of this stuff and then get back out to it. So the Boreal shirt has not been used very much at all. The five months of winter we spent in the church basement, I did not do much more than just work. I just worked and worked and worked and we tried to use that opportunity best of a bad situation sort of thing to get caught up and we mostly have but I didn't go outside I didn't do anything outside this winter at all I just worked and worked nose to the grindstone um, 
and that's still kind of what I'm doing. I am getting outside a lot more. It's not what I would call bushcraft, it's more like homesteading now, and that's what it's gonna be. Um, I don't have time to go out and take trips. And now that I'm kind of into this stuff, I don't really miss it because I get all my outside time. I'm crafting stuff with my hands. I'm working with wood. I got a bunch of buildings that I need to build and we got gardens to plant and uh, land to clear and a bunch of old dead nasty wood in my future building sites that I need to get off the ground and burn. And the Boreal shirt is not, that's not really in my opinion or at least in my arsenal what it's for. Um, and we don't have a lot of space in our cabin. So I could hold on to it until I am able to get out and do those things. Or I could just use what I've got and sell this. So that's probably what I'm going to try to do. Because I could use the money right now in this situation real quick. Because um, there's some things we need to purchase and some things we need to upgrade real quick. And I will go over all that in the video show you what all we've got and what we're working with in this off-grid situation there have been lots and lots of challenges um, moving out here and living off-grid but and we've had some setbacks also just with the way some things were set up in the equipment that was here when we moved in and things not being maintained properly and it's not necessarily anybody's fault because the people that were here had to bolt down to the lower 48 and they just didn't really get a chance to set anything up here but they did do a lot of great work on the cabin but anyway we've had our hands full but it's been fantastic um, there has been some frustrations and some oh no what are we gonna do's and some uh, you know just challenges you move off the grid into the Alaskan bush and it gets a little hairy sometimes but we've got a good support system. We actually do have some neighbors that we bought the land from. Um, I can't see their cabin from here, but it's close enough that we can walk to it. And uh, they've got a full homestead thing going on, so we can pick up some stuff like milk and eggs and butter and stuff from them without having to run out to the store. And then we've got one more neighbor over behind us in that direction that uh, we also know really well. And. So that's not a bad situation. Those are the only two neighbors we have though. And then there is the river and that way is two miles of nothing. You gotta cross two creeks and two large swaths of wetland swamp um, to get in and out. So we don't see anybody back here that shouldn't be back here. And uh, there's lots of planes that fly overhead because this is the preferred route, I guess. They probably show tourists the cabins and stuff out in the bush. I don't know. But they do fly over a lot, like right directly over. But it's okay. Whatever, that doesn't bother me. We didn't come out here just to be hermits and completely secluded. We go into town um, about once a week. We'll go in on Sunday and go to church. And then, you know, once or twice a month we'll go into the big city to get supplies and stuff that we haven't set ourselves up to cover yet because hard to set yourself up when there's three feet of snow on the ground and everything's frozen solid but that's all over with now and we will be getting to it so anyway the bushcraft shirt does not see much use just because it's not really a piece of clothing for what I'm doing and uh, I think there's probably a two-week wait time right now if you order from Lester River bushcraft you want this heavier barbarian wool size large um, get in touch with me I might list it up on the website and see if it sells and if it does then I can use that money and if I want another one sometime in the future then I I've never met Jason at Lester River Bushcraft but I've spoken with him on the phone several times and I'm sure I could probably work out to get one and if this one doesn't sell then I'll just keep it and won't have to do that later so, but anyway, that's it for me. One last look. This is probably one of my favorite pieces of gear. I don't really want to sell it. But I guess I will anyway. 
So stand by. I've got a couple of videos that I made quite a while ago that never got posted up. I'll probably just post them up. Like products, stuff that we made sort of thing. And uh, pretty soon here, I think I'm going to let Breakup do its thing first because everything is just kind of nasty with snow and mud and stuff half melted. And it's not really a desirable time, but it'll be over with in the next week or two. And then I will make our off-grid homesteading introduction video. And... Uh, Hopefully it'll all be good. God willing and the creeks don't rise. Which they will during breakup because that's what they do, but it is what it is. So that's it for me. Have a good day.